All right, I believe we are live. So good evening and good morning and good afternoon to all the Christians and the Jews and the Muslims and the atheists and the agnostics and the Hindus and the Buddhists and yes, even the Odinists who are watching us right now. Uh, I'm David Wood, your friendly neighborhood philosopher. And with me right now is Brother Rashid. Now, I know if you're an Arab, you know exactly who Brother Rashid is, but I also know that some of you who, who aren't Arabs don't know who Brother Rashid is. And uh, just so you know, way back, way back when I was getting started, um, when I was getting started in uh, apologetics dealing with Islam, and um, uh, Nabil had just converted, and we started going around speaking and so on, uh, when you would ask people, um, especially, especially Arab Christians, uh, who they listen to, you would hear, you would, you would always hear two names. You would hear uh, Zachariah Boutros and Rashid. Those are the, those yeah. are the two that, that, that everyone would always mention. And so uh, it's an honor to have uh, Brother Rashid here. Uh, Brother Rashid, why don't you give people a little uh, introduction to um, who you are and what you do, and then we're going to go back, we're going to back things up, talk about uh, your earlier life and how you became a Christian. So uh, what, what, what's going on now? Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Brother David. What a fired up introduction. And uh, thank you for uh, the nice words you, you said about me. And uh, I'm just uh, honored as well to be uh, on your channel. Um, uh, everywhere I go, people tell me also the same thing. Uh, do you listen to Brother David Wood? Do you follow his videos? I say, I always say, who doesn't? <laughs> uh, we always follow you, and uh, uh, it's amazing uh, what you do on YouTube. Uh, I'm uh, Rashid. My name, that's my real name, actually. That's how my dad named me. Uh, I don't say my last name just because um, uh, followers of uh, the peaceful religion m might find me somewhere and... Uh, Make some peace with me. So I, I try to hide my last name. Also, for the same reason, uh, I, uh, I don't want to hurt my uh, other family members because they have the same last name. And they say you don't own that last name, so you can't use it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, we share it. We all share it. So uh, keep it private. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why people call me Brother Rashid. And uh, I was, I'm from Morocco originally. I was born and raised uh, in Morocco, and I was there until I was 32 years, um, 32, 32 years old. Then I had to leave the country. And um, that's a brief, what I do right now, I'm a host for um, one of the most famous um, Christian shows, apologetic show, a live calling program we called it daring questions and now it just ended after 12 years and i'm now starting a new one hopefully um uh in a few months in a few coming months and um that's what i do uh, i'm almost like you david but on the arab world i uh do a lot of apologetics i debate muslims and i raise so many questions about islam and um, I try to uh, invite people to, um, especially Muslims, to a good dialogue. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, you, you were you were showing me a book uh, mm -hmm. a few minutes ago. What's uh, what, what's that yes. about? Um, I had this book in Arabic and French, and now it's coming in January. Finally, I, have, I was able to translate it into English. It's called The Ideology Behind Islamic Terrorism. And uh, because I hear a lot on the news uh, that Islam has nothing to do with terrorism, and I just showed in this book, it's a thick book. I took me two years of research, and it's a summary of uh, Islamic history and with what we go through today. Um, so many terrorism is going around in the world, and I just point to the roots of that terrorism, where it comes from. And it's going to be available um, January um, in January on Amazon and other uh, outlets. So um, if you like to read about these topics, this is um, a really, um, I think it's a reference when it comes to terrorism and the history of jihad. Now, are you actually going to say that, that jihad has something to do with Islam? <laughs> definitely, definitely. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
Well, that's, that's, that's actually good because when I say something like that, people say, oh, it's just because I'm a, I'm a racist or something like that. Yeah, they, Islamophobe. They, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 they can't say racist when you're saying it. So you're on, you're on, no. a, little bit, you're on a little bit better ground there. No, my mom and my, my extended family, most of them are still Muslims, and I love them. I love Muslims everywhere, mm -hmm. and we shouldn't be called any names if we point out to a uh, reality of uh, facts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and really, it's just a uh, it's just a sad situation that you can, you know, if you if you tell people, hey, uh, Islam has bad, false teachings that are getting right. people killed. They say it's because you you must hate people. Right. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I want to be clear when, um, you know, we, we, we just had a we just had another terrorist uh, in Strasbourg um, uh -huh. got killed waging jihad for Allah. Um, how can how can people say that we must hate him when we don't want him to go out and get killed? Right. We don't want these terrorists to throw no. their lives away, uh, no. slaughtering for a false God. Plus, um, we are entitled and everybody has the right to criticize any ideology, uh, including Islam. We should not pamper uh, Muslims and, and uh, we should not try to please them. Uh, there is a difference between people and an ideology. I can criticize any ideology without um, uh, being uh, named or labeled in a label. I, I, uh, people do that with Christianity all the time. Why not Islam? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, uh, but believe it or not, there are lots of Muslims who say otherwise, right? There, right, there, right. There, all the time. <laughs> there is one ideology that must not be criticized. Uh, you, you do have a, you have a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, people who love you over here in the in the chat um, can't read some. I uh, can't read all of them, but if we as we go, if we get through your testimony, uh, we might have time to uh, take some questions and comments. Sure. Um, but a lot of people sending you greetings from around the world. Did want to add this one very quickly. This is from <laughs> Renee. She said, "David, can you ask Brother Rashid if he will please make more videos in English?" I will. I will. If you help me, David. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you know, we could, could because I was thinking, right? Because I, I, yeah. I wanted to have you on here to uh, to share your testimony with with people. But I see lots of objections popping up and I'm thinking, oh, I, I would I would love for us to respond to these objections. So so right. maybe maybe on another live stream, we'll actually go through some topics, start going through uh -huh. some uh, some objections and, and replies. Uh, to, I would uh, love to. I would love to. Yeah, that'd be awesome. All right, well, brother Rashid, why don't, uh, why don't you tell everyone uh, more about your 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 background, your childhood, uh, what kind of family you grew up with, and uh, give people a little background. Well, I'm in the second uh, in my I'm the second in my family. We are seven brothers and sisters, four four males and three females. Uh, my dad was the imam of the local mosque. And um, my my oldest brother was uh, born with uh, something called cerebral palsy. Mm. So my dad couldn't uh, take him and start taking him uh, to uh, the mosque and, and stuff like that. So he started making me as uh, the 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 first child, the first born. He, he started treating me that way, at mm -hmm. least. And he started taking me with him to the mosque at age of four. Uh, my family was a very conservative Muslim family. Uh, my dad uh, memorized the whole Quran, and he had students in his mosque. I still remember we always had more than 50, 60 students around, um, and all of them are studying the Quran. Nothing else, just the Quran. They recite, and they, they, um, they hear my dad reciting it, and sometimes they comment on some verses, and they try to find out what what the uh, um, commentaries say about those verses, etc. I started uh, learning the prayer since um, uh, four years old, uh, how to pray, how to do the wudu, the washing, and how to... Uh, so I was imitating my dad, basically, in the first years, but... Um, uh, that's what happened, and um, this so, is a little little background. <laughs> so, so ju just to be clear, you didn't come from kind of a secular Muslim background, right? No, not at all. Uh, actually, my grandpa was um, also a sheikh. Uh, 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 a whole, uh, we, we can say respected holy man in the town uh, because he memorized the whole Quran, and uh, I had so many. Um, 
from in my extended family so many people who are considered as imams or sheikhs uh, people who can teach islam mm-hmm. now did you have a did you have a, a strong loving relationship with your with your parents Yes, we we were a very um, uh, close family, and we uh, my dad had only one wife, believe it or not, <laughs> and uh, uh, his brothers had different wives, but he he was the only one who had only one wife until he he passed away a few, uh, two years ago. And um, we we I loved my mom, I loved my dad, and actually my dad was very respected in the town. People kiss his hands because he's is the imam. I I always was proud of him, following him everywhere. And when people ask me, "What do you want to be? What do you want to be when you grow up?" I, I say, uh, "I want to be like my dad," because yeah. I I love the way people treat him and mm-hmm. they stop on the street and they they, they they are nice to him. They invite him in weddings. He's in the first row and in funerals as well. And he gets to to speak to um, give counseling to people, reconcile people who are fighting. He had uh, so many roles in the town. Mm-hmm. And uh, the, the, the yeah, the reason I was asking about that is um, because lots of times when we hear uh, former Muslims uh, who, who've left Islam and become Christians or atheists or something else, uh, a lot of people want to understand a bit about their their background. Like, did they come from a, a, a devout Muslim family or was it more of a more of a sort of Muslims who go to the mosque a couple times a year or something like that? Or and uh, the second thing that pops up is. Uh, did they hate their parents for some reason? Like, you know, did, did you grow up and your dad's beating you all the time and stuff like this? And so maybe, maybe this is how people are thinking. Maybe the reason yeah. you left Islam was because you're rebelling against your parents. Some some kids rebel uh, against their parents. So, uh, so, so we we already know here that you came from a, a devout Muslim background and you had a good relationship and uh, really looked up to your dad. Yes. Now, but something must have happened. Along yes. the way, because here you are, uh, here you are preaching Christianity. Um, An infidel. <laughs> yeah. So something must have happened along the way. That process must have started at some point. So yes. uh, what what started happening and, and around when did it start happening? Well, uh, let me say that I uh, I didn't. I wasn't looking for any other religion, and and I was satisfied with Islam because that's what I knew, and I was proud to be a Muslim. Mm-hmm. And um, my dad always taught me that all other non-Muslims they would go to hell, and they are not. Um, God hates them. Allah hates them. And uh, I always was like, what's wrong with them? I mean, it's obviously, obviously, Muhammad is the prophet. Obviously, the Quran is the book of Allah. And obviously, it's the the, the, the true religion. Um, what's wrong with all these people? And um, uh, I memorized one uh, sixth of the Quran, um, uh, because the Quran is divided into, uh, we call them ahzab. It's like big... Um, uh, chunks of uh, it's 60 of them 60 parts so i memorized uh, 10 of them that's uh, uh i memorized them by heart um, knowing them from a to z and at a, a age of uh, 12 i had to move because i went to school and primary school was close to us but um uh, middle school and high school was very far away from uh, home so i had to move to casablanca And moving from a little town to Casablanca created a little bit of uh, spare time in my schedule because uh, in my town I had full schedule from school to the mosque, from uh, from mosque to uh, home, and then it goes around the whole year like that. Even on um, summer vacation, I just spend the time in in the mosque. I, I had nothing else. But moving to um, uh, Casablanca, I, I, uh, the thing, things changed. Mm-hmm. So anyway, my entertainment at night, especially during Ramadan, was a radio, a small radio. And I started tuning in to listen to anything in Arabic, just to, because I, I, I need to wait until late supper so I can eat. Mm-hmm. And um, it wasn't it wasn't mandatory that I fast during Ramadan when I was 12. 
but it's it's preferable for for kids at this age to start learning at least if they if they don't fast the whole Ramadan at least one third or two thirds of Ramadan is good so like that they prepare them for when they are 14 or 15 mm-hmm. and uh, so I was trying to entertain myself and then I heard the name Yeshua which is um, um, Jesus. But in, in, in Arabic, as a Muslim, I heard always Isa in, in Morocco. I never heard the, the word Yeshua. Um, you hear it in Egypt, probably, uh, among Christians and in Jordan and Lebanon. But in Morocco, because we don't have um, native Christians, so we didn't have the opportunity to, to, to hear that name. So when I heard it the first time, it was a weird name. Then I stopped. You know, when you're tuning and, and, and you just let's hear and sometimes a word or two. And then I stopped. I started tuning and focusing the the channel uh, very well. And then I heard the whole thing. It was like almost half an hour of teachings about Jesus according to the gospel, that he was the son of God, he was crucified for our sins, and he is the Lord himself. And I was, I was really, really um, shocked to hear all that. It was like the biggest blasphemy you can hear. And in the same time, I couldn't stop it because I was so curious to to know what, what the, the host um, is, is saying. So at the end of the program, they, they gave um, uh, an address. They said, if you have questions, write us to this address. So I took a pen and I started writing on my hand. And then... And then when I um, finished, I wrote a letter, I sent it, and then a process started uh, back and forth uh, for four years, comparing Islam to Christianity, debating Christians, trying to convince them that Islam is the truth, and trying to respond to their questions as well, and trying to learn from them what they believe about Christ. Now, this, uh, uh, do you remember... What this group was was this uh, was this a, a Christian group based in Morocco or were they were they outside of Morocco and they were uh, somehow broadcasting in Morocco? It was a Transworld Radio TWR mm-hmm. and they they rent actually they buy time from Monte Carlo. It's it's not based in Morocco. It's based in Monte Carlo uh, in Europe and they they had um, um, a wave. And they buy that wave so they can start broadcasting, I think, for three hours at night uh, for Moroccans. And it happened during the 70s, the 80s and the 90s as well. And um, it's it's um, it was a very effective way. And um, the, the, the 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 hosts were Arabs, mm-hmm. even though Transport Radio is not an Arab um, organization, but the hosts were Arabs from Lebanon and from Egypt. And from different countries, from Jordan as well, and they they took nicknames, um, not real names. So I corresponded with different names. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't know their pictures, you don't know their faces, you don't know the real names. They just um, nicknames. And uh, uh, but also before we go on, I wanted to uh, uh, if you could explain the relevance of uh, Isa and Yasua, um, yeah, because. It it should be Yeshua, right? That's right. That's the the the, the right translation. Uh-huh. For some reason, the Quran says Isa. Until now, people try to give some explanations, but they're not satisfying so far. Yeah. Do do, do you have any theory about uh, about why that is? Um, I, I think uh, th- there is. Uh, I I still don't have any um, satisfying answer, as mm-hmm. I said, but. Uh, uh, one of the reasons, probably he he heard it. Muhammad heard it from some mm-hmm. uh, uh, local Jews, um, a sect that hated to say Yeshua because it means God saves. Yeah. So probably they they say Isa just to avoid saying that God saves, uh, naming this man to be to be really um, uh, bearing the the name of God himself. Yeah. And, uh, so and, probably that that's the reason. I, I'm not hundred percent sure, but yeah, that's yeah, yeah. No one is because we yeah we 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 weren't there and we don't actually we don't actually have the record. So so we just have some theories. But that that's that's the one that 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 I had heard about and that perhaps perhaps. Uh, Perhaps some of uh, the 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 people around there who hated Jesus 
were yeah. referring to were referring to him as Isa because that's that would be the Arabic for for Esau. That's uh, right. Who is, who is like the enemy. And so, yeah. you know, who, he, he's who hated his promise. Yeah. So maybe they were like referring to him in this derogatory manner and Muhammad didn't realize it. And he yeah. picks up. Yeah, he picks up the name. Anyway, one of one of the uh, one of the, the because because listen to this. We don't have in even in Arab records, we don't have Abd Isa, the slave or the servant of Isa. We have the slave or the servant of Yeshua, even in, during the Abbasid, the Abbasid uh, dynasty. Mm -hmm. And and we don't have Abd Isa among Christians, so we, which is um, um, very telling. Yeah, interesting. All right, so you said uh, you spent about four years interacting yes. with the Christians, and uh, so over those over those four years, it seems that you must have come around to concluding that Islam is false and Christianity was true. So, uh, yeah. do you remember some of the some of the some of the things that might have started to bother you about Islam or some of the points that you thought uh, Christians were defending really well? I, I think, um, uh, let me tell you this. It was like kind of funny. I thought I'm going to end this in the first round. Uh, uh, Islam would win mm -hmm. and uh, um, uh, big time. So I, I always recite verses. I write them down and I send them to my friends and they will be like, they make no sense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, they'll come on. It's, 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 it's obvious. I mm -hmm. mean, you, you know, Jesus was never crucified. Somebody else was crucified in, in his place. And I, and I thought I, I made sense. And then they will be like, well, how are you going to respond to, uh, uh people, uh, historical, uh, uh people who, uh, or, or in history references in, in, in history to the crucifixion? How are you going to respond to questions? Who was the guy who, uh, replaced Jesus? Mm -hmm. And when that happened and where all these questions, do you have answers to them? I said, sure, sure, sure. I will go to commentaries and I will have all that. So when I go, I find, I find like different versions contradicting mm -hmm. each other and none of them is sure. And at the end, they say, Allah alam, which is, uh, God knows or Allah knows. And I'll be, if Allah knows then why you are saying that. Yeah. <laughs> so at the end, I found I'm not on really on a solid ground. I'm on a shaking ground. And that started bothering me a lot, especially the crucifixion. Mm -hmm. And 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 I found that Islam has a very weak um, uh, argument uh, or even uh, you can't call it argument, very weak story mm -hmm. about what happened exactly. Uh, was it really Jesus or somebody else? And if it's somebody else, then we have so many unanswered questions. Mm -hmm. And th that changed how I look at the Quran. And I started dealing with the Quran as a text. Instead of making him a holy book, I started dealing with it as, as a text, as the Bible. And when I got out of that um, circle, I started realizing uh, the bad things that Muhammad did, uh, the bad th the negative things on the biography of Muhammad. I started rereading the Islam with a different mind, different perspective. And that opened my mind to so many things. Mm -hmm. And so how, at, at what point did you become a Christian? Uh, I'm not like those guys who can remember exactly the hour, the minute, the, the day, but uh, I was um, gradually um, leaving Islam and becoming more Christian. Mm -hmm. It took me um, around the age, end of my 16th year and beginning of 17, mm -hmm. it took me several months to make that transition. I remember sometimes like uh during during certain periods i'm hesitating to leave islam but in the same time my mind is so um convinced that that uh, christianity is the truth but you know how we were raised to love islam it, it was uh, something very dear to our hearts and leaving it and knowing all the consequences that will come after that is really something I struggled with uh, big time. And at the end, um, I just um, left Islam. I sent a letter to my friends in Monte Carlo telling them that I believe I'm a Christian now. Mm -hmm. 
And so uh, let's back up as far as uh, uh, consequences in general in, in Morocco. Now, Morocco's not like Saudi Arabia or, right. you know, Afghanistan or something like that. True. So, you know, apart from you, how would what would it look like for a Muslim to become a Christian there? It's probably you're not going to get killed or something, right? Well, uh, uh, Morocco changed over time. Uh, we are talking when when I'm talking about my story. That was uh, at the end of '89, beginning '90, mm -hmm. and and now it's it's 28 years later. Mm -hmm. So things really changed uh, uh, in a, in a dramatic way. I mean, Morocco improved a lot uh, when it comes to that. It still is not is not totally open but it changed a lot mm -hmm. back then it was really hard uh, i mean i heard stories of um, uh, christians arrested mm -hmm. and christians um, in 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 jail Chris, christians oh, persecuted okay. in different ways yeah my 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 father-in-law who's who's my father-in-law right now he wasn't my father-in-law back then mm -hmm. he was in jail for his faith Mm -hmm. And um, I, I have known others in Morocco who were in jail for their faith. And um, so, would, would uh, this have been people getting locked up for, for converting or for preaching, or what? What, could, the, what basis was there for locking them up? Just uh, there is nothing in in the law that says uh, in Moroccan law. Th this is the irony. Morocco mm -hmm. borrowed a lot of his law from France, mm -hmm. and and so it's it's mixed with Sharia and French law. Mm -hmm. And, and when they came to the law, they didn't find anything that will say um, a Moroccan when converts to Christianity, he should be punished. There is nothing in law, but they, f they find ways around it. Uh, for example, my, my father-in-law, he, he was judged based on uh, an article in the law that says whoever was a Muslim and was uh, caught uh, uh, breaking Ramadan, he should be jailed for six months uh, and, and paying a fine or so and so. So the, the the judge asked him, did, did you fast last Ramadan? He said, no. So you're admitting that you broke Ramadan. Yes. And then you go to jail for that. So <laughs> they find ways. Yeah. Wow. Um, That's interesting. Yeah. So, uh, so you, you contacted your friends, told them that you're, you're no longer a Muslim. You're a Christian. Now, yeah. I've seen many times about how difficult this can be uh to you know tell the tell the family tell the tell the parents um yeah i saw this with nabil he really really didn't want to tell his parents yeah. he even wanted to get he, he wanted to get baptized and stuff not tell his parents his parents actually found out when they came over to his apartment and he wasn't there and they saw uh they saw on his computer that i was going to be baptizing him that weekend so that they they that's how his parents yeah. found out he really didn't want to tell them so uh how did that how did that play out with you it, it's almost the same story yeah. repeated. Um, I, I tried to hide it for, for several months, and I was living like two lives. Uh, one of them, uh, because th those friends, they, they sent me, they sent my name to a missionary, an American missionary who lived in Morocco, and they told him about me. So he contacted me through a letter. He sent me a letter, and he sent me his phone number, home phone number. And then I called him, and then we met, and then he introduced me to Moroccans like me, hmm. who are um, almost the same age and studying through TWR again, and almost we have identical stories. So when I started making new friends and going every Sunday to those secret meetings uh, in one of the houses in Casablanca, and... Um, coming back at a certain time and I'm not going to the mosque though in my prayers and all my habits started changing so family members noticed mm. and remember I was staying with my uncle because he's the one who lives in Casablanca not my dad and then my uh, cousins told my mom and uh, when my cousins told my mom my mom made a meeting and she wanted to prove them wrong that I'm not really they, because for for us in Morocco it's not clear um, Christianity is not clear they, they will say you he became Zionist he became a Jew he became an infidel and it's all mixed together in the same pot <laughs> so um, they told her all those things and 
He said, no, 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 no. Rashid is very wise. He wouldn't do anything uh, bad, and he, he knows what he's doing. And I'll prove that you are just trying to um, uh, make his reputation bad and make him look bad in front of me. He's, he's not like that. Stop, stop um, those things. So I, when I came, she asked me in front of them, are you really um, a Christian, Muslim? What are you? And I, I, I was shocked because I wasn't expecting it. Mm-hmm. And then I said, well, um, it's not for you to, uh, to know what I believe. It's between me and God. And then said, well, just say Shahada to prove that they are wrong. Just say Shahada. And um, in 10 seconds, I was, my, my mind was racing because one, one side of me says that I should say it to save myself. And another one says, no, you will, you will be um, uh, living a, a, as a hypocrite, a, a different life. Mm-hmm. And I said, Mom, I can't say it. And the minute I said that, you know what it means for Muslims. Um, if you can't say it, then you are not a Muslim. And my mom started crying and uh, people around me, they started um, spitting on me and saying names, calling me names and get out of here. And you embarrassed your dad. Uh, um, and now you brought shame to the whole family. And leave us. Go to your Christian friends, your infidel friends and leave. We don't want to see you. So I, I was shocked. To be honest, I wasn't expecting that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was expecting that they will be a little bit mad, but it wouldn't be that much because I, I knew how my all my family, even extended family members, they loved me so much. I was loved by most of them. Um, I had no problems with, with anybody. So I thought that our relationship is stronger than anything, but it turned out I, w- I was really wrong. So I had to leave the family, and I lived almost uh, two years homeless, without a family, without a shelter, without food, without anything. And so, you're 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 going around homeless for two years? Yes, uh, just uh, friends, spending time with friends, and anyone that sometimes just random people I I meet, I spend time with them. I say, hey, I don't have a place, and I I remember days where. Well, at night when I uh, spent the whole night in the street, just um, uh, sleeping uh, in a corner, uh, uh, homeless. And uh, I went to, well, sometimes to missionaries. Um, they gave me, they provided shelter for a week, two weeks. And one of them hosted me for a few months. And then I go from a place to another. I didn't have any any place. So did you ever, uh, did you ever, did you ever stop to think? Hey, what's going on here, Lord? Like, you know, I I did the right thing. I told people that I believe in you, and now look at what's going on. I did that, to be honest. I, I, I had my gospel with me, and I was um, wandering in the streets of Casablanca and sometimes in the parks and just crying and praying. And I, I said, Lord, I don't understand. Mm-hmm. I don't understand this. Can 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 you send me something that will explain to me why I'm going through this? And uh, also, when I went to prayer meetings with with uh, my friends, uh, so many of them they they were they sympathized with me, but so many of them they are living with their families mm-hmm. and they can't provide, they cannot help me in any way. And if they if they tell them his parents they, and his family kicked him out because of his. Uh, faith that would be another problem mm-hmm. but and, and many of them they were hiding their faith from their families as well so mm-hmm. uh, they couldn't help much but when I asked the question why this is happening to me and they will be like just have faith in the Lord and you will go through it and you will come out strong and actually that's what happened now, now when I look back those were the best Two years in my life, and, and when it comes to prayer and um, talking to God, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, and, and that's uh, that was actually that was that was similar for me because I became a I became a Christian in in jail and yeah. from an atheist background, and then I had I had several more years to serve in prison, and you know people think about that. Oh my goodness, prison—that's like an awful, awful place. But in That's terms right. of like 
developing spiritually and, and reading the Bible and fellowshipping with uh, with other Christian brothers and having accountability and so on. That was that was the the best Christian period in in my life, right? Was, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's 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 an irony. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, so interesting. So, so well, what what happened after that two years that that changed things? Um, uh, the missionary who was my first contact saw that my life was deteriorating. Basically, I left school and I couldn't uh, provide for myself, and I, I was really just going down. And he was like, uh, "Rashid, you're a bright kid, and you have a future, and um, you need you need a shelter, you need a family. Why don't you come and live with me?" You'll be like one of my kids, and uh, we'll take it from there. And I couldn't believe my ears when I heard it. I, I told him, are you serious? Mm -hmm. He was, yes, just come and live with my family, and uh, we will try to help as much as we can. So I went there, and uh, that's where I actually I learned my English. <laughs> oh, okay. So you can't blame him for, for, for my mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he helped me a lot, uh, and he said, you need to go back to school, you need to start looking for a job as well, and you need to stand on your feet, um, and uh, the Lord just uh, put us in your way, so probably this is um, uh, a sign from the Lord that you need to, to um, continue your, your uh, career, your path, your growth and faith and everything, and um, I stayed with him for three years. Stayed with the with the Christian ministry, uh, missionary for for three, three. years, and so yes. did you finish finish school during this time? Uh, I finished uh, school. I uh, even found um, temporary jobs here and there. I uh, was able to get some money, and I later on I found a part time job as an accountant, and I started uh, my my life started looking better, and I reached out again to my family, and I started connecting with my brothers and sisters and i went visited um, a few times and told my mom that i love you and no matter what and, and i will come and and my my relationship started getting a little bit um, you know when it dries first and it becomes a little bit softer later it mm -hmm. became really softer over time mm -hmm. and so uh, uh what what happened after those three years then um, I just um, I uh, established my life and mm -hmm. I got married. I moved to an apartment. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Yeah. You got to back up there. You you got married. <laughs> now that's uh, I've seen lots. I, I've I've seen when um, when now you married a, a Christian woman, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Now a now, Christian Moroccan woman. Yeah, I've seen I've seen the families of. Muslims who leave Islam and become Christians and the family is really hoping that um, that their son or daughter will return to Islam and that can be part of the reason for 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 shunning the person right is to put all kinds yeah. of pressure on the person so that you you learn your lesson you learn your mistake and you'll eventually realize no I need to I need to be with my family so I need to I need to come back to Islam and so um, there, there, there are different ways that this happens. Like, uh, basically, you have the the families that will that will shun the person, and then you have the families where they like take you around to all these different Muslim scholars who are supposed to convert you back to Islam. Like Nabil's dad did that with him; he was taking him to yeah. to people uh, in different parts of the world, Muslim scholars who are supposed to show him that uh, that Islam was was true. But the goal is really. Uh, to get the, the the son or the daughter to return to Islam. But then once that son or daughter then says, hey, I'm, I'm going out and, and getting married and I'm marrying a Christian, that yeah. can be very difficult for the family because they start to lose hope, right? They, they were hopeful before. They had a lot of hope. Yeah. I really hope but, that my uh, my son or daughter is going to come back to Islam. But now, wait a minute. Now you're going off and you're going to get another family, a Christian family. <laughs> it's going to be much more difficult for you to uh, to come back to Islam. So what what was your what was your family's reaction there? Um, uh, well, let me tell you first. It's hard for uh, an MBB. We call them MBBs, Mor <laughs> Muslim background believer. You're about to say Moroccan and, background. Believer. <laughs> exactly, Moroccan background <laughs> believer. <laughs> <laughs> it goes both ways, by the way. <laughs> uh -huh. 
<laughs> but uh, it's hard for an MBB to find a wife, a Christian wife in Morocco. It, it, imagine how hard it is for a, a, a boy to, to become uh, a Christian. Mm -hmm. uh, it's even harder for a female to, um, to convert to Christianity. And um, I, I was able to live uh, homeless, but imagine a girl. She, she, it, it will be like uh, impossible. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was hard for us uh, young guys to find uh, girls that are willing to be uh, to have a family and, st and stuff like that. So there were few girls among us. Yeah, I, 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 just, I just I just went ahead and looked it up because I was wondering, but uh. I clicked on Morocco, and uh, the Muslim population of Morocco is over 99%, and everything else makes up less than 1% of the exactly. of the population. So uh, everything yeah. else that's there besides Islam, less than 1% yeah. of the population. So, yeah, going yeah. to be hard uh, finding someone there. Yeah, it's very hard, very hard. You can't, you can't find a wife, a Christian wife there. So I, uh, as soon as I um, saw this uh, beautiful girl and her parents are Christians and she grew up in a Christian family. Uh, when she was three years old, she, her, her, her dad and mom, they became Christians. And as I said, her, her, her dad went to jail for that. So she grew up knowing what uh, suffering for Christ mm -hmm. means. And anyway, when I saw her, um, I just said, uh, hey, can we start um, talking and can we start um, uh, corresponding, actually? Back then, no iPads, no messages, no WhatsApp. Letters. Nothing, so. Kids these days don't even remember. You had to, you know, you had to write something and fold it up and stick it in an envelope and... Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, she said, "Well, sure, sure, we can. Um, I give you the address, and then uh, uh, we can start corresponding." And then, anyway, when when time was uh, when time came to uh, marry her, I just went to my mom and I said, "Hey, I found um, uh, a girl, and uh, we like each other. We want to get married." And she was. Um, f f she had two problems. First, she asked me, is she like you? Means she's Christian. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I said, yes. And she was like, why? You, you should, um, there are many girls, are Muslim girls around, cousins. We have girls in, in our family because it's not, it's not um, something bad to marry your cousin in Morocco. Um, and, and anyway, she, I said, no, mom, because I'm looking for somebody who will understand me. And we are on the same page. She said, but she's kafra. She's, she's like infidel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said, well, th that shouldn't be a problem for you because I am an infidel. She will be an infidel. It's good. We will have infidel kids. And at least we are in harmony. We're not fighting each other. We are, <laughs> we, 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 we love each other as infidels. Um, is, is that good? And she was like, no, it's not good. And I, I said, where is she from? Is she an Arab or Berber? I said, she's Berber. Because we have this, um, uh, Berbers in Morocco are the, the original people. Mm -hmm. the, and Arabs came with Islam in the 7th century and they invaded the land and they brought Islam and, and they Arabized the whole Morocco actually. And she said, Berber and Christian. It's like twi twice yeah. the problem. <laughs> it's very difficult. But anyway, my family accepted that um, they will go with me and we will do a wedding and we will do it traditionally. And that's what we did. Of course, my family hoped that I, one day I will go back to Islam. But as you said, when they saw me getting married, a Christian woman, and they met her parents, they started changing their mind. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, I mean, e you know, e even even for people who don't believe in Islam and have no sympathy for Muhammad, uh, we can be sympathetic towards, you know, mothers and fathers because we, we, we do know we do know those kinds of those kinds of feelings. And uh, um, just <laughs> when you're talking about uh, when you're talking about your mom saying, uh, you know, hey, but there are there are plenty of, of Muslim women. That that reminded me of of Nabil. It's uh, uh, with his mom trying to lure him, because they tried everything to lure him back to Islam. They were trying to show him, uh, you know, different scholars and so on who yeah. were 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 going to give him great arguments and so on. That didn't work. Mm -hmm. They actually they actually got Fair. scared of him, 
Um, but then it was, hey, you know, if you convert back to Islam, I can get you a really beautiful girl from Pakistan. And uh, his mom said that to him once, and Nabil goes, yeah, you could get me four beautiful women from Pakistan. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, she got – she didn't like that very much. But, um, yeah, so uh, – and the, by the way, the, the Berbers, the people yeah. – you know, people in the West aren't – generally aren't familiar with some of these groups. I believe – I believe Augustine or, or St. Augustine, as, as some people yes. say, was, uh, was, was, was a Berber, right? Yes, uh, Saint Augustine was a Berber. He's, they call him the Augustine of Hippo. Hippo mm -hmm. is a place in, in Algeria right now, what we call it Algeria right now. Back then there were, there was no Algeria or Tunisia or Morocco. It was just North Africa. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, Tertullian, the, the guy who coined the term, um, uh, Triunity, mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's, uh, a Berber and also Cyprian is a Berber because it used to be, a uh, a very strong church in Carthage. Carthage mm -hmm. is what we call it Tunisia today. Mm -hmm. And um, there were people who really, uh, they were fathers of the faith there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Simon of Cyrene is from North Africa. And uh, mm -hmm. uh, they, they said from Libya, most, most likely he could be a Berber. People are not sure, but he could be a uh, uh, Berber. So there are there are many Berber figures in history, but um, Islam came; it just wiped out Christianity from North Africa, from Morocco, Algeria, and Tunisia and Libya. Mm -hmm. Now, your you so your wife's parents, yes, were Muslims. Yes, and she was already born, and she was a toddler when yes. they converted and became. Christians true and so they, they, they were they were already hu husband and wife who were... Yes. They, they were they were married they had kids and then um, they, they met some missionaries and, and then they heard the gospel and they they loved uh, uh, Jesus and they said we want to be Christians and they paid a price for that um, a, a big one mm -hmm. And they converted, and um, back then it was the King Hassan II. King Hassan II actually wanted to execute the Baha'is, and the, the, the lawyer told my father-in-law, he said, uh, one of the options probably will be executed, because mm. Hassan II doesn't play with faith. He mm. is he's the prince of believers, we call him, and he's a descendant of Muhammad. So if you if you reject Islam, it means like you are, you are insulting him, himself, the mm. king. His Majesty, so um, you, you should realize what you are doing here. And he said, "I don't, I don't, uh, I don't understand all that. All what I understand, I found the truth, and I'm following it." Hmm. And and they took him to jail, but um, God had mercy on him, and he was released after six months. Wow. Well, well, that's. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm just thinking. I'm just thinking of it in terms of how all of these awesome things kind of work together in terms of the missionaries who are who are preaching and uh but also you know just people who are broadcasting things on the radio and that these these right. reach these reach people in different ways and then you know you end up you ended up after becoming a christian because you started listening to people preaching on the radio end up right. marrying a woman who's was a Christian after her parents converted because missionaries right. are working there. So it's a, uh, it's really cool that there are lots of people who are doing uh, awesome work in the world yes. like that. And, and it's cool because, um, you know, people, and, and you, you know what, David, mm -hmm. um, uh, just one, one, one little thing, mm -hmm. the missionary preached the gospel to my father in law. These, they on, sacrifice well, one, their whole one, life. One, sec, one second, Rashid, you're breaking up a little bit, so let's give the internet oh, okay, a little sorry. couple seconds to uh to go back. Um, okay. All right, go ahead, go ahead again. You said the missionaries who preached. Who they went and preached? Uh, my father-in-law. They went to Berber villages, which are far away from the center of um, uh, civilization in Morocco, mm -hmm. from far away from Casablanca, far away from other places. And they sacrificed their whole life. They just stayed there, and they they have like a carpenter place, and they teach kids uh, uh, something to do, um, like to be uh, carpenters or to be a handy work. And they teach them some songs in the Bible with it. And um, they 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 probably brought 
few people to Christ, three, four, something like that. But they were happy. The, the, it's a very good investment for them. Mm-hmm. And na, 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 I mean, I'm very thankful for people like that. Well, it, it's awesome because most of these people will never hear about, right? They're, no, they're, they're, no, they're not. They're not getting any uh, any worldly recognition. Any credit. And no, they're not getting any credit for it. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that's awesome. Now, now we have to. Uh, we got about we got about ten minutes left. Um, so you get a wife, you get married, but mm-hmm. obviously you end up over here, and mm-hmm. end up doing broadcasting and so on. So. Uh, when did when did you decide to leave Morocco, and, and what what was the reason? Well, I left Morocco because um, for for the time I was married, uh, we started having a house church in our home, and we started having meetings, and I started um, uh, having activities with uh, Muslim background believers in Morocco, and organizing. Uh, baptisms, uh, Bible schools, and uh, smuggling Bibles through Spain to Morocco, uh, distribution inside the country. So, and I was doing it, uh, everything was underground. And then for, for years, mm-hmm. uh, imagine since I got baptized in 94, and I got married at ni- in 97, and then um, I until 2005. So that's uh, if you get get it from my marriage until 2005, is eight years, mm-hmm. and we were doing that successfully in Morocco, and then suddenly the police started finding out, and they started interrogating me, and uh, people come into my house, and secret services, and and my life started going upside down uh, after that. So I I had to leave. I had to make a decision. My wife was pregnant. And um, I, I started getting into, into trouble for, for my activities and my faith. And they literally told me, if you don't stop, we will we'll make you stop. And it will not be true what you think. It will be something else. We can, we can do anything. They actually warned me that they can put drugs in my uh, office and, and, and blame me for having drugs or something like that. So I, I started being a being afraid of anything around me. I, 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 I lost that confidence and that trust, and, and I started caring for um, just, uh, I mean, bothered. Probably anything can happen to me. And um, even cars, when a car is following me, I think they are going to harm me. They are going to do something. They are going to make an, an accident. Um, all kind of bad thoughts started coming to my mind, so we decided to leave Morocco. And how... Ha- how did that work exactly? I mean, you you can't just go get on a plane and suddenly you're you know. No, no. Uh, I had uh, I had uh, a sister um, living abroad, and uh, she became a believer. She had a different story um, uh, through a friend of mine who's an Egyptian, and then um, I had uh, because I had a company in Morocco. I started a little business, and you can register it as a LLC and. Uh, and I did that, and I had people working for me, so it's easy to get a visa if you have an LLC in Morocco back then. And uh, I traveled to Europe, and actually I traveled to the uh, U.S. also and 25 other countries uh, back then without any problems. Mm-hmm. And I never thought of leaving Morocco, And uh, but I had a visa on my passport. I just, um, when it was the right time, I, I, I left. Mm-hmm. And... Uh... It, it, it's kind of amazing, right? Because, um, you know, there, there there are situations where if you're being persecuted, you would want to you would want to stay in the area and uh, and and deal with it and continue to reach people and maybe even pay the the ultimate the price. price. There are situations and and people who would be called to do that. But, you know, you're you're married and you have a, a, a wife and and child. And there are times when you get out of there. There are times when you, you get out of there. And what what's really amazing is you've got people who are threatening you and intimidating you. And then your reaction was to go west. Mm-hmm. And yet the way that turned out is you ended up being able to reach people around the globe with yes. uh, telling people about uh, Islam, the facts about Islam, and also sharing the gospel with people around the world. 
And I know there are tons of people now in Morocco who know who you are and who watch your messages. And so that's just amazing that people think, aha, we're going to we're going to get him. We're going to get this yeah. guy who's smuggling Bibles and stuff. And then you leave and they think, ha, we got him. And then yeah. a few years later, they start hearing about you again. Yeah. And uh, it's so it's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's re that's that, that's it's, really awesome stuff. So yeah. how did you how did you get involved in? uh in in ministry over here because i mean if you're just yeah. moving i mean if you're moving over here moving to the united states let's uh how, how, how do you then go to to broadcasting around the world um first of all um when i mean just to confirm what you were saying i was between two things stay in morocco or leave i was struggling with that idea for a few months mm -hmm. And to make that decision was not easy. I was, uh, am I a coward? I'm going to leave or should I face my fate or I have other options? I, uh, I mean, I was between torn between two feelings. One of them tells me to leave and one of them tells me to stay. And at the end, I, I, I just made that decision, but my heart stayed in Morocco when I left. I was crying because we had a ministry. I had a business and we had things. And then suddenly you just start from scratch and, and you, you start with nothing and then in your life it just torn apart. And uh, I, when I left just a few weeks later, I had my son, my first son, after eight years of waiting. And you start thinking about it. I, want, I, I left Morocco. I left a Muslim country. I don't have to deal with anything. Then this friend of mine, who have known me for years and he knew that I was active and I write stuff uh, under nicknames on the internet and he said why don't you um, join us on a channel and we are doing this uh, broadcasting and you can say the same thing that you write you can say it on TV and um, I mean I was again torn between two things mm -hmm. I just started my life I just have a son I don't want to get into another trouble uh, but again, reading the book of Acts, reading how people sacrifice their lives for, for their faith. And I was, yeah, I mean, I know there is an, a price. I know they will probably look for me to kill me. I, I know they will, they will, um, some people, they will hate me and they will insult me, threaten me. But we cannot preach the gospel to Muslims without going through that. We have to take it seriously. And if we don't do it, who's going to do it? Mm -hmm. So I, I came to that decision. I said, I'm going to do it. With, uh, of course, after consulting and praying and asking different people, including uh, those uh, the closest to me. Mm -hmm. and, so, uh, and so here you are now with a, with a, a ministry around the world um, sharing the gospel and teaching people about Islam uh, we do want to wrap it up here but uh, we have about 800 people in the uh, in the chat who are watching and there are plenty of Muslims here and some of them really don't like you uh, what words do you have for the Muslims who are watching right now um, I just want to tell them to uh, try to look at things Get out of your Islam and look at things from a different angle. I love Muslims and I love uh, all all people, all kinds, but specifically Muslims. Uh, as I said, so many in my family members are still Muslims. And uh, the Lord loves them as well. There is a difference between criticizing a set of doctrines and loving people. So you have to separate yourself from Islam. Islam is not you. Your identity is not Islam. Uh, God loves you. I love you. I'm sure that David loves you. And so many Christians, actually I have seen so many churches during Ramadan, they prayed 30 days for the Muslim world. They don't hear these things. They think that Christians are just um, trying to um, convert them, get, the, get them out of their religion uh, and they are um, like conspiracy theories. They are conspiring against them with the Jews. That's that's the idea that Islam put in our head, and it, it kind of shut the door. 
in front of ev every critical thinking. Just get out of all that and look at things from a different angle. You will see it clearly. Muhammad is not a prophet from God. Islam is not the way to God. And Jesus Christ is. So when you get out of that and you see it clearly, you will understand what I'm doing and what David is doing. Is not to hurt you, actually, is to help you get out. People helped me through those broadcasting to get out of Islam, and I'm so thankful to TWR because they broadcasted those programs and they helped me. I'm so thankful to those missionaries who uh, helped me through my um, struggle. And uh, I'm so thankful for those missionaries who preached the gospel to my in-laws. And um, so uh, I, I actually, if, if, if I tell you how many stories of Muslims when I meet them in different countries around the world, so many of them, they just hug me and cry and they say, sorry, forgive us because we hated you. We insulted you. We threatened you. And we hated um, even seeing your face. But now we're so thankful that you did this because you saved us literally. Well, that is, uh, that is awesome. And I, I really, I, I do think it's interesting that uh, you were reached with the gospel by radio. But now, here, now in our time, we have the Internet, which is uh, you can reach far more people far more quickly. And yes. uh, it, it's amazing that that's what you ended up doing when that's how, when that's how you were reached with the gospel. And so, so, so everyone, it's, it, we do really live in amazing times right now. If you want to reach Muslims with the gospel, there is... There is no better time in history to reach Muslims with the gospel True. because we have we have the means to do it on an unprecedented scale. Fourteen centuries worth of Christians couldn't have dreamed about the opportunities that we have right now to reach Muslims uh, with the gospel. And uh, I, I know there were tons of tons of questions over there uh, for Brother Rashid. But for those who weren't familiar with him, I wanted uh, to, to give him all the time he needed to to share his testimony. So. That, uh, that you know who he is for the future, but he's already agreed to come back on and to, to have some discussions and make some English videos here. So uh, we'll have him back on as soon as he's free, and we'll go through some interesting topics about uh, the Quran, um, about scientific issues in the Quran. I'm saying that because there were Muslims over there bringing that up. And so, uh, <laughs> so we ha we're, we'd be happy to, to go through those. We could pull the sources up on the screen. Have sure. those discussions. Uh, thank you, Brother Rashid, for uh, joining me and and joining us here. And thank you we'll... so much, David. Thank you for this opportunity, and thank you for what you are doing, and thank you for all the viewers um, who are watching us, and thank you for uh, everybody, uh, Muslims, Christians, uh, all all kind of people. Thank you so much. Oh yes, yes, wonderful, and uh, we will certainly have you back. And by the way, for those of you who want to. Uh, follow Brother Rashid on, on Twitter or Facebook. Uh, support him on Patreon. All of his, his links are down there in the description box. So don't leave without uh, clicking something so that he can keep you up to date on what he's doing. And again, he'll be back soon. God bless everyone. See you next time. God bless you.